Uh, Thunder God is the first part of a trilogy that's set in the early Vedic civilization. So, uh, I'm, I've been a big fan of mythology. I've been like, since my early childhood, you know, I've, you've been hearing stories from, from my grandmother and parents and they, uh, that's how my interest in mythology started. And uh, Finally, I decided to write, uh, to write a book and uh, I was looking for, looking for a subject and I found uh, Indra a ca as a character very interesting. Like for me personally, I've always been attracted to very tormented characters with doomed destinies, you know, in literature. Like if you like, like Sidney Carton from Tale of Two Cities or Captain Ahab from Moby Dick or Edmund Dantes from Count of Monte Cristo. So those are the kind of characters I've, I've kind of liked and lent towards. So uh, Indra, for me, when I, when I was going through my research, I found had this kind of, this kind of interesting character. He was more than just a, just a hero and he had these uh, amazingly human weaknesses, although he was a, he's considered a god. And somewhere his origins have always been shrouded in mystery in Indian mythology. So uh, I decided that was, the, that was the topic I wanted to write with my first novel. And then, I, th then the research started. I didn't find too much material in, uh, in the Indian mythology and in uh, the Indian books. I, I had to look in Persian and Sumerian mythology to find instances of Indra's early life. And uh, yeah, it's been an interesting experience because uh, my background is screenwriting. I've written a couple of films and uh, which, have, which have been, uh, which have come out and a few that are in, have been, have been in the can. And uh, writing a book was uh, never on top of my mind initially when I got the story. I, all, I was thinking of it as a, as a movie but then mythology you know like you don't have that many references the immediate reference to mythology when you talk about film is you've got your Ramayana serials with with those arrows with those really bad special effects and trying to push this as a film I realized was was difficult for me and as I got into writing I found the story was getting bigger and bigger and it wasn't really going to be uh, plausible to put into one film you know to condense into one film and uh, that's when the idea of writing a book Came in and then I met. I then I spoke to a publisher. I sent the sent the first three chapters across, and then I got I got a contract to write three books. And the first one's ready now. The second one I've just started. So it's been an interesting journey. It is mythology, but uh, I've kind of researched the period and the time frame. And uh, uh, there is this whole theory of the Aryan migration, which Western historians like us to believe that this tribe came then and taught us everything we know. I think the story is a little different from what that was. But I've used that as the basis because that's part of our textbook. Uh, you know, it's, it's there in our textbooks and it's in our, it's, it's in our history that this, this, this migration of this tribe happened. So my, my story was set, is, is set in that, that reality or, or if you could call it reality or that, that his, historical period. And I would like to call it mythology revisited. I've used characters from Indian mythology and uh, woven my own story basically. I have not quantified the space in terms of uh, the Christian calendar because uh, according to Hindu mythology we've been through several floods, we've been through several ice ages. According to uh, the Christian calendar maybe 10,000 BC is when they consider humanity moved towards civilization. You know. And uh, that's not the case with Hindu mythology. We, it talks about civilizations that existed much before. So I've not tried to quantify it in the in period, but I've kind of used the the era of maybe the late Bronze Age, or the early Iron Age. That's the period I've kind of used to set it in. Or uh, I've tried to pro humanize him. I've tried to portray him as a man who who had to fulfill this destiny that he was. And how, how in fulfilling that he became a king, a great king, and then he became a god. One of, uh, one of the characters I've used is Mitra. Mitra was an Indo-Iranian deity who kind of died down. His popularity and worship kind of died down. So I just found the character so interesting that he, uh, I've used him, he, he appears in the, he, in the epilogue, he goes through, a, he goes through his, his enlightenment, his process, his Kundalini awakening, and he becomes Vishwamitra who is a very, very prominent character in Hindu mythology and a sage who was a warrior. So, in my, in my story, Mitra is the warrior, who bec warrior king who becomes Vishwamitra. There is a little bit of a license I've taken here because uh, I don't think Indian mythology connects the two characters in this way, but I've taken that liberty. History, I find, is very, very uh, erratic in terms of, you know, like, it's always the, the side that one is, which which is written the history and that's the kind of history that you that that has filtered down to us 
So I don't really put too much faith in history, but I've put a lot of this thing in mythology, in earlier mythology. Like you know, I've I've been I've been influenced by the Greek, by the by Sumerian by Sumerian mythology, by Norse mythology. So there's there's always the, there is a common link. Like uh, Joseph Campbell speaks about it in his book Hero of the Thousand Faces, where he's found this commonality between different myths of the world. Because at the end of it, it is I think. Uh, how people perceive their universe in that time, you know, and there, there could you could draw a commonality because the human condition was fairly uniform at that in, during that period across the world. The way I've written it is the the, the the first part is is about Indra. My second part is called Rak Rakshasas, the Shadow Warriors. It's about a tribe of Dravidian. It's a Dravidian tribe from the Dandaka forest, which is uh, central and so south India. It, it used to be a huge forest, so it's about a tribe from there and and uh, how how they cope with this threat that's coming to the coming to them from the north it's really very hard for me to you know it's it's easy to put it in one word say it's imagination but how these thoughts come into your head is is uh, i don't know it's it's difficult for me i i started off i think being a rationalist being extremely skeptical before i started this now i'm not so sure you know now i'm open to the idea that there could be something out there that we don't know about and uh, yeah, the idea. Uh, I think what I try to do is I try to keep my mind, try to empty my mind as much as possible, and sort of kind of focus on my story and what I have to say. And I don't know; it just flows. It's, it's hard to describe. Uh, so I started writing with uh, you know making character sketches, and uh, then went on to making small stories, synopses, and then eventually started writing screenplays. The idea of writing a book hadn't crossed my mind then, and uh, it was only much later when I had the story and when I had plotted it, plotted it out that I realized that book was the way to go with this. I I, I found a character. I found this place. I I don't know. I I've tried to analyze it. I I think somewhere it's a search for my own identity. You know, like because I'm a polyglot. I've I've I'm I'm Malayali. Uh, my parents are Malayali, but I grew up in Bangalore. I did films in Tamil, so. I feel connected to all these cultures at the same time I feel distant from them so somewhere it's I think it's that search that uh, sparked off this interest to write this story